Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakadash. Double honors being to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. Noise in the gospel, bro. Looking at the standard of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Hey, real quick, man. <laughs> hey, we told you this is why you can't trust Esau. Um, I remember last year, um, if you paid attention to when Biden was doing those press conferences, about the uh, federal stimulus and you know, how they was passing out these stimulus checks. He was basically saying, and I've even said it, that basically they're going to basically make you pay this money back because it's really a loan. <laughs> and the fact about it is they're loaning you your own money and having you to pay them back, which is the ultimate form of usury and, uh, and unrighteousness because, you know, first paycheck that came out was 1200 then it was a $600 stimulus check, then it was $1,400 stimulus checks, all right? And um, they had people really believing that they was there to help them, like a $1,200 uh, stimulus check is going to do something for a person that has mortgage, kids, you know what I'm saying, I have uh, car notes, insurance, all these things. It's not going to do anything to help solidify their, uh, their reasoning. So what happens is this money they was basically going to tax you on the back end of it, okay? Because you got to understand, this devil, nothing is for free with him, you know? And it should piss a lot of you people off because the reality of it is, this is your money that they're having you to pay back because you've paid taxes all year, you know what I'm saying? The infrastructure bill, all those things, the military budget, the, 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 the freaking 700 something billion dollar military spending budget, that they have accumulated over the year or two, over the last couple of years, that came out of our pockets, man. Okay, on top of the money that they printed, like Social Security, Medicare, all these taxes that they taking out of your paychecks at work, who you think is coming from? They're not paying it. You think Joe Biden or uh, the elites or any of these upper echelon moguls are paying taxes or you think that they are paying for Social Security or, or or any of these other uh, infrastructure taxes, you think that that's coming out of their paychecks? You're crazy. When they get their money, they may pay a particular tax, but other than that, man, they get ninety percent of their income every time they get paid. While America's is only taking home what forty to fifty percent of their income, sixty if you're lucky, because most people they're getting hit with some type of alimony or child support. You know what I'm saying? Back taxes. You have garnishments. You know, and on top of that, you got medical uh, expenses with health care is pretty expensive. I remember on a job, man, I was paying probably like, I want to say about all together, almost, I was probably paying like $150 a month just for all my benefits. That's include dental, uh, medical, eye and vision, and on top of the taxes they were already taken out. They was taking about $400 on my check every, every two weeks or so, easily, you see? So this man, man, <laughs> he has to go down. All right, period. He's 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 nothing but he's he's the oppressor, as the scriptures say. This is the heritage of a wicked man. The the heritage of oppressors. This man is very oppressive, I and mean, he's gonna oppress you until he can't do it anymore. And even when you're dead, he's still coming after you. Because in some cases, if you have liens on your properties, and let's just say if you're a parent and you die and you have a lien or something on your property or back taxes. They're going to come to the next of kin to collect that information or to collect that money. Like, this man is dead. How he's still being generated a bill, you know? And then they use that to justify to come take all the assets so it don't go to his kids or his loved ones. You see? Because when you die, your inheritance is supposed to go to your sons, according to the law. If you have a second son, it goes to him. If you just have daughters, then it would go to them. But first and foremost, it would go to your first son. And then he divide the inheritance among the other brothers, etc. But Esau, he doesn't allow that to happen. That's why Jake don't have anything for real, you know. So anyway, it says IRS tells Americans to pay back six hundred, twelve hundred, and fourteen hundred dollar federal stimulus checks. It says here's why it's happening and what you can do. <laughs> Told you, you know they're gonna get you one way or another because I don't notice if you fill out a W two. If you brothers fill out that, uh, what do you call it, like the W-4 forms, the tax forms, you notice that you can't, uh, you can't cho choose your exemptions anymore. You know, they pretty much choose them for you. 
you can file exempt, but under under certain pretenses. But other than that, you used to be able to claim one allowance, two allowance, and possibly three to get the less possible taxes taken out your, your paychecks. And then you pay it at the end of the year on the back end of it. But now they don't even allow you to do that in certain cases. You see what I'm saying? So he's trying to liquidate and, and, and get everybody like he can get it because they, they know that their society is crumbling. You know what I'm saying? And they continue to print money, which is causing the values of goods to come more expensive, which is called inflation. But it says the IRS is sending letters to Americans demanding that they pay back all or parts of their stimulus payments from the American Rescue Plan or CARES Act, which is this is their money. They're basically giving you your money acting like they're doing you a favor. All the money that you're paying or that you paid into this, this coming, this came out of our pocket, the $1,400. They should give you that. That's your shit. You see, it says the letters have been going out over the last three, four weeks as people in different states reporting getting letters from the IRS indicating that they pay back 600, 1400 or 1200, depending on what they reported in their 2020 tax returns. All right. And the crazy part about it is I just got finished paying these motherfuckers off, you know, um, that was something they claim I didn't report enough taxes or something like I think for year 2019. So I, I just finished paying them off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I caught up with it because I, I never really owe I think I've owed them. This is like my second time in life I've ever owed the IRS. But, um, you know, I've always got it paid off. But regardless of it, man, you're going to always be in debt in this system no matter what. Whether it's a freaking hospital bill, whether it's a, it's a bill, whatever. It's going to be something that's going to keep you in a bind here. Or sometimes you could just have unfortunate events. You know, like when I got into my car accident... You know what I'm saying? Now they trying to charge me for a $22,000 bill for just getting checked out. But what's so funny was that my insurance, um, it didn't even cover it because I was in between jobs at the time. And I got into the accident on June the 3rd and my insurance for my previous gig had just ended on the 31st of May. And then when I started the new gig on the, I think it was the, what was it? It was supposed to be like the 6th of June. They couldn't backlog it. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't backdate it from the beginning of the month of June so it could be covered. So what they said was at the other job, they was like, well, what you can do, you can uh, sign back up for the insurance and you can have something which is called, uh, what is it called? It's called some type of, uh, it's a particular program they allow you to be covered for that particular month. But they was trying to charge me like fifteen to $2,000 to uh, be able to get on that that thing and pay back that 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 information. But I just didn't have it at the time. I'm just like, man, fuck it, you know. So therefore, they, it's something, you know. Like the people that ran into me now, they're claiming that they're hurt, which is all BS, you know, which my insurance company is looking into it. But I'm like, I just saw y'all people in court like two weeks ago. This little girl ain't fucking hurt. If anything, I'm the one that should be collecting from y'all because I actually started feeling pains a couple of weeks later in my back, you know. I'm good now, but... Regardless of it is, man, you know, people are always trying to screw you and they're letting them get in the way with it. But anyway, that's, that's just that's just here in Babylon is all wickedness, man. You know, but this on top of that, this makes it no better. So it says one such recipient was Natalie Bonelli, a Massachusetts resident who says the IRS sent her a letter demanding a six hundred dollar payment plus three point uh, three dollar and twelve percent or three dollar and twelve cent interest. She says she panicked and she told the WCVB. She says, obviously, I don't agree with it. And I can't find anyone to help me to actually do, to do something about it. And nobody's going to help you about it because everybody is part of the, the gathering, so to speak. You know, they're all part of oppression of people. You see what I'm saying? So the IRS, man, that's not even a legal company. That's not even an entity of the United States. It's a private owned business, just like the... Um, just like the Department of Human Services or like what they would consider the uh, the Child and Protective Services. That's not even a real conglomerate of the United States. That's a private owned business, man. That's just like McDonald's suing you because you didn't choose to partake in a promotion of a Big Mac. So they send you a $100,000 bill in the mail saying, you have to pay us because uh, you didn't try our Big Mac. Like, fuck you. I don't like Big Macs, man. I don't want to eat it there. But see, they disguise these things under what they call the color of law. When the reality of it is they're really illegal entities because the IRS that's privately owned, the Federal Reserve that's a privately owned bank. It's not a conglomerate of the United States. So how in the hell are they imposing these 
particular uh, methods on people. And I can tell you why, because Esau's the devil. All right. So I did a search on usury. Exodus 22 and 25. It says, if thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou should not be to him as a usurer, but neither shall thou lay, you, lay upon him usury. Now, when you go into the word usury, usury means a tax. You see, it means a tax. And if you notice, everything that you do in Babylon comes with a tax. Have gas tax, you have food tax, you even have water tax. You know what I'm saying? You have a car sales tax, like if you buy a brand new car. You gotta have some money because hey, whatever I think you're paying like 10% of the of the sale price. So let's just say if you got a car for for uh seventeen thousand dollars, you may have to pay seven thousand dollars in taxes just to get it tagged up. Who in the hell has that? <laughs> Not too many people got seven grand that they can blow off. So therefore, they come up with these new ways as to writing the sales tax part of the bill of sale. That way they can finance it into the purchase price of the car. But even then, when they finance it, they're hitting you with another tax because that's what financing means. They will finance you for more money on top. So you screwed either way. You know, either you get perfectly A1 credit and you get the lowest interest rate possible, which is still usury because, hey, believe it or not, a 1% interest rate, though it's not much, it still adds up at the end of the day. And most people, they don't just have twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 laying around. It just don't work that way, at least not in America for, for, for us, you know. A Leviticus 20, matter of fact, Leviticus 25 and 37, it says, Thou should not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend to him the victuals for increase. So if somebody was to say, hey, bro, I need to borrow $100 from you. And I say, okay, and when can you pay back? He said, well, I could pay you back in two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And then he's like, okay, I'll give you $100 in two weeks. So you borrow, you give what you pay. You, you get back what you borrow. You don't add... Okay, $20. Like, you know, niggas do that shit in the world. All right, if I give you 30, you got to give me 40. Like, why? You ain't a bank, man. And even then, banks ain't supposed to be doing that. That's wicked. Because you can make a living by loaning out money and people pay you back. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you, if you want to profit off something, then you know you do your little things on the side, but you don't overly tax people. So this right here is unrighteous, but hey, this is what happens when you put your faith and trust in this devil. Okay, Deuteronomy 23 and 19, it says, Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Esau was technically our brother. All right, it says, Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. You know, and it says, Until a stranger thou madest lend upon usury. So we can tax heathens, okay, but until thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury. For Yahweh thy power may bless thee in all that thou settest thy hand to do in the land. Where the thou goes to possess it. So in the kingdom, we going to put a lot of usury taxes on Esau Edom. You know what I'm saying? We're going to tax you for living conditions. We don't know how you're going to pay because you ain't getting no physical money. Okay? You, your ass is going in the holes of the earth. And you're going to have to pay for that with your labor and with your body. All right? You're paying for the wood. We feed you because we got to keep you fed. We're going to feed you. Might not be the best, but you're going to be fed. And we're not going to feed you anything unlawful either. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to uphold the commandments. But regardless of it is, we're going to tax your ass to death. You know what I'm saying? And hey, the best way you can pay that is giving us your children. Because the minute you have kids, we're, you're, they're getting sold into slavery. Scriptures tell you that. Hey, we're going to send your kids through ships and we're going to sell your kids to the other side of the earth. So hey, the minute you devils pop out little, little, uh, what's this? Little Andy. All right. Little Timmy. Them little... Demons are going right in slavery, okay? You're not going to enjoy a moment with your children in the kingdom of heaven. You're not because we got our families taken. And if you look at the systems today, the family support systems, the systems are more broken now while people are in the same household than 200 years ago when we was in slavery. You've been better off keeping a family separated before you came up with a program and the mentality to, to sacrifice our well-being among our families because you got men and women and children that live in the same house and that totally hate each other, totally disrespectful. You got women that blatantly kick the men out of the house just so she can receive aid and public assistance. And guess who they're going to come after for that? They're going to come after the man for that. And it's another thing, too, that women are having kids by other men, but still 
they're paying child support for another man's kid. Like, how unrighteous is that? You see, and, yeah, and people get mad at us when we say that this system needs to go down. <clears throat> and then you got this child credit tax stuff that they're giving these these broken down harlots every month. You know, like my child's mother, that low life piece of, you know, I, you know, I ain't even going to go there. She's just a low, uh, just a low life. You know what I'm saying? She really can care less about the white man being the devil as long as they supporting her and her dysfunctional ass family. You know, as long as she getting a paycheck every month for bringing in some other niggas babies to go out there and be a whore. She's OK with that. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? It's good because. The most high is going to destroy. You see what I'm saying? And that's just an example. You have many women and men that's in that predicament. You know, like my child, you know, took care of. My thing is this. If I ain't got it, don't call me and ask for it. You depend on the government, your daddy, right? Your husband. Ask them to give her her shit. Don't, don't fucking call me. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, when she need it, it's there. But overall, if you got it, don't call me. Period. You ain't you ain't helping out over here. Don't don't call me. Use use the, use the system like you've been using, and that's just where I'm at with it. And whoever don't like it, oh well. All right. Um. Let's go another precept here. This is the book of Psalms. Uh, twenty eight and eight. It says, "He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, and he should gather it for him." That would pity the poor. So eventually, all the unrighteousness you're sowing in the earth, you're going to have to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to pay for it because at the end of the day, the most I said that you've hid your belly or you've stuffed your belly with uh, uh, hidden riches. So the gold, the rubies, the precious jewels of the earth that you've been storing and covering for yourself for, for the last thousand years or so. Hey, the most High is going to require that. And you're going to have to you're going to have to go in the mines. You're going to have to go in the mines and, and mine for diamonds and rubies and precious metals, man. The darkest of the darkest, the darkest of the, of the diamonds, the stones. You're going to have to dig that up and you're going to have to give it to us. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to work very hard. We're not going to sit up here and I ain't blowing up no mountain for you. You're going to go in there with a pickaxe and you're going to beat it down. I don't care how long it takes. If you don't do it, you're going to get your ass whooped. All right. On the brink of death. And I may heal you just enough so you can go back out there and work. Because during the time of the slavery, man, they was putting sludge hammers in Jake's hands. And Jake was going to town on the railroad and on those salt mines until their backs gave out, until they died. It wasn't no call off notice. It wasn't no uh, two week vacation or there was no AL or what they call annual leave time that you were getting paid for. No. Like he said on our Django, he said they're going to put a machete, they're going to put a sludge hammer in your hand and they're going to work you every day, all day until your back give out. Then he said they're going to crack you in the head with a hammer and throw you in the ditch and bring in the next slave. That's the type of rigorous treatment we got from these people. And this is what they're trying to march us back to. That's why I'm glad we at the end of this thing. But anyway, going back. It says. Um, <clears throat> it says she tried contacting IRS, but received no answer on what's happening. So it turns out the $600 stimulus check was mailed to an address in the New York City in her name. But she had moved and the IRS indicated that Bonelli should have claimed the mixing check on our 2020 tax return. There's no reason to charge her. Okay, if she didn't get it, nobody spent it, then that means the money is still there. How are you going to charge her for something that's never been spent? It says, and she did that. Now, months later, the IRS came after the money. Quote, she says, now I have to give the money back I've never got. So it's a little bit frustrating, she added, but the IRS said they can trace payments to avoid confusion. Well, if you can trace the payments, you should have done that in the first place. You see what I'm saying? This is another way of them testing the fabric of people because I've never heard of a fact that, oh, you didn't get a paycheck, so we're going to charge you for the check we sent out. No, most they're going to do is send no return address. They're going to send it back to the sender. You know what I'm saying? And then they're just going to get it back in the system and they're going to send out another payment where well, you call them to verify your new address and then send you the payment. Period. They ain't got to charge. They ain't got to charge you for it because the check has never been cashed. See, that's another way of them playing on you people's emotions, and this is what happened when you trust in Egypt. Okay, and Salakia, man, I'm talking a little fast. I'm actually a little pressed for time, but um, it says here. Uh, it says they can trace the payment to avoid confusion, but the problem is that the process isn't nearly as simple as the IRS indicates. 
Sure it isn't, but it's easier to send somebody a healthy bill in the mail. That's easier, right? It says it requires a string of phone calls to a number of different branches within the IRS. And the letter she received only gave her three weeks to render payment. <laughs> it says experts say the best course of action is to pay what the IRS say you owe, then request a trust to dispute whatever findings they generate if accurate. Man, yeah, I'm fucking right. So I got to pay y'all money in three weeks because y'all fuck up? Man, get the fuck out of here. That's bullshit. Yeah, right, man. They can, And then it's so funny because they doing it in the mid of a pandemic when everybody's still out of work. Jobs are not hiring like they claim they are. Okay, they're very picky. They claim they're needing all these people, but it's to the point. I'm hearing jobs are hiring people and not even giving them start dates or, or not even calling them back, offering them the job, but not even calling them back to set things up. So it's something going on out here. You see what I'm saying? They claim that, oh, well, we're in a bind. We need people. They're not trying to hire nobody because, for one thing, <laughs> these businesses are getting ready to go under. And this IRS, that's going to be a thing of the past in a minute because I'm going to tell you something. When all hell break loose, you're going to have people that's going to come and look for you devils. And they're going to remember all the hell you've put on them. They're going to remember the times you've separated the families. They're going to remember the times that you've took food out their mouth. You've garnished their wages, man. You, you, you've suspended licenses. People livelihoods, man. You've destroyed lives, bro. And you're not going to pay for that? You crazy. All right. Anyway, let's go here to the book Isaiah 10 and 1. It says, Woe to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Grievousness. You know, on TV and then they come up with laws and so forth overnight. This is what they do. They practice laws overnight and then they make them law. Okay, well, we're going to do this over this weekend, you know, that way um, people don't get will. No, if you're passing laws, the people are supposed to agree or disagree with what you're doing, period. You lawmakers have been a thorn in people's side. And this is why this is a big powder keg that's getting ready to explode. And on top of that, everybody is pissed off from what's going on in the world. Everybody's on edge. So this is add insult to injury. But it says to turn aside the need from judgment and to take away a right, take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. OK, and who is that? Jake. You see what I'm saying? Israelites It's set up to destroy Israelites. It just, you know, Esau takes a few of his people with him. They get caught up in the interest of it. But nonetheless, man, this is really Jake that's getting hit by this. You see? Book of Nahum, no, not Nahum, Hag Haggai. Book of Haggai 1, and I'm going to start at verses, let's start at verses um, 3. It says, Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sisu houses, as this house lie waste, okay? And the house that's lying waste is talking about uh, the Israelites, man. You see what I'm saying? Because, hey, you Jakes, you want to live high off the hall. You know, you want to keep up with the Joneses just to be taken from you in the end. Okay, and that word goes into sapon, which means to cover in, winds coated, cover with boards, paneling, covering panel, covered panel, you know, like protective, to hide, you know, to hide a covering, specifically a roof or wainscot to reserve. You know, Jake is looking to reserve what they said. We're trying to get the bag, you know, we're trying to be pristine. You know, we, we trying to keep afloat. Only thing that's on niggas' mind is some goddamn fiat currency. You know, oh, I got to get the bag. I, Jake sell themselves so short for getting, quote unquote, the bag. They don't even see what's happening to their nation. It says, as this house lie waste. Okay, and it says, now, therefore, thus con said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much and bring in little. So, Lord, like, what the hell are you doing? It's like you walking forward just to walk backwards. Like, you niggas are walking backwards, man. You're working backwards. All the money, all the things you done labeled for, the college degrees and all that, just for you to end up in a rut. Like my peon, peasy-headed sister, this clown goes back and go get a master's degree a couple years back when she wasn't finished paying off the first fucking degree she got. Her bachelor's degree, when she... My sister graduated from college in 2000. We came out... And it was weird because we were five years apart. So we came out at the same time. When I was graduating eighth grade, I think she was graduating high school. And when I was graduating high school, she was graduating college. 
because she went into high school in uh, 19, no, she, damn, when did she went to high school in 1996? I was still in elementary and then uh, she graduated high school in 2000 and I went into high school in 2000. So yeah, she was in high school in the 90s and then um, she was in college from 2000 to 2004. She went to a school called Columbia University in downtown Chicago, very expensive school. She finished in four years with a bachelor's in, well, with a bachelor's in business management, BA in business management. And she's still paying off that shit to this day. Went back and got a master's degree, but yet she's still working a damn high school, man. So out of all your pristine knowledge and all the shit you went to school for, you went to school for business management, but yet use in high you 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 are in the dean's office in the high school, which I'm not knocking her, you know, for whatever job you get because you got to do what you got to do. But this is what happens when you put your faith in Esau Edom. You know, just because you got that piece of paper, that don't mean somebody's going to give you a chance. You see what I'm saying? You just put yourself in debt. This is why the best thing, if Jake's are planning on going to school, which, you know, I'm not knocking Jake that's going to go to school because I even thought about going back for a few different things. But see, my schooling was more on more on job. I get on job training. I took trades. And even then, you know, I went to a community college. That way you can get certain grants and so forth like that that could pay for your two years in community college. And believe it or not, you can do a lot with a two-year degree, man. You could be, which I'm not saying what we will be, but I mean, you know, EMTs and so forth, firefighters, you you just need a two-year degree. And even now, you don't even need to go to college for that. They'll train you. You know what I'm saying? So this is what happens when you want to keep up with the Joneses. You want to have that pristine title when you, I got my master's. Because you know the black woman, she dwells on the fact of her quote unquote credentials like your schooling means something bitch like your schooling didn't teach you how to be a better woman or teach you how to keep your mouth shut so it don't mean a fucking thing and that's the problem with our women you know they go and get all these credentials but then they become worse and worse because now they think that they have power over some bullshit paperwork that this man told them that they've earned and really it was set up for you to get you didn't earn shit they gave it to you they push you through a curriculum man they don't teach you shit they don't teach you how to be a woman or teach you how to shut the fuck up or to obey and respect your men. So that people pay some work, paperwork, that shit is pointless. Like I hear women say this shit all the time. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I got my own business. You know, I'm doing this. I want to be, man, shut the fuck up. You ain't going to do shit but be a fucking bad wench or your ass going to get put to death in Jacob's trouble. All that dumb shit y'all be talking, man. All that so-called knowledge and I'm getting money here and there, that don't mean a fucking thing, man, when all hell break loose. And I tell them all the time. I said, okay, when the playing field is even, talk, have that same energy. Have that same energy, man. Have the same energy when the playing fields become even. Keep the same energy. You not. So all that shit don't mean nothing. You know, like uh, my little brother's grandparents. His auntie... Ganey, she uh, is a vice president of a bank. Nice crib, you know what I'm saying? I've been, I mean, they've been in my life since I was seven years old. I mean, I, they, they're like, they, they're basically my family, you know, but they have that whole mentality. Oh, well, you know, go to school and do this and this and that. And yeah, they, they push that on all of us because my grandfather, as stoic as he was, as strict as he was, he's raised his daughter to totally be off. You know, just just off, man. But she's a vice president of a bank. How do you think she got there? She pledged, first of all. Second of all, how many men you think she's been with? You think she's worked that far because she was just so smart? Hell no, man. She fucked and sucked her way to the top. And she has a husband. That's a tattoo artist. You know, and then her older brother, Malcolm. Yeah, I'm giving out names. He was in the news a couple of years ago about a church out there in Chicago that people was living in and the conditions was beyond lethargic, man. It was beyond, uh, it was basically, it was not livable. And he had a lot of lawsuits against him, but he's supposed to have been this top preacher in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's these people are fucking through. Anyway, it says here, you have so much and bringing little. Ye eat, but have not enough. Ye drink, but are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, earned them to put it into a bag with holes. OK, 
Okay, so hey, you basically being knocked 20 steps back. And Esau Edom, he doesn't help. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways, Jake. Consider your ways, man. All right, one more precept and I'm done. This is the book of Obadiah 1 and I'm going to start at 5. It says, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how are thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they've had enough? <laughs> Hell nah. That's the thing. They rob you when you're dead. Look at what happened to Red Fox. Allegedly, when he was in his casket, they came out and took the rings off his finger, man. And the man's dead. Man is in peace, man. And yet you come and you fucking with him. This man has a lot to pay for. It says, would they have not stolen till they've had enough? It says, if they gate gatherers came to thee, would they have not leaned some gleaning grapes or leave some grapes? No, they're not. They want everything. They can take you, they'll take you too. All right, but anyway, with that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakadash. And with that, Shalom, Baba Baba.